What if I told you that you could design and live the life that you want on your own terms? Would you do it? Would you take a leap into the unknown? Or would you settle for a life of limits? A life of safety but lacking true meaning? Zephan Moses Blacksburg here, and I'm on a journey to help you ignite your inner passions, let go of your fears, and get more out of life. Will you join me and make this year your year of purpose? Welcome to the Year of Purpose podcast. Welcome to the Year of Purpose podcast. I'm Zephan Blacksburg, and today I'm joined by John Lee Dumas, who is the founder of and host of the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast, an award-winning podcast revealing the journey of today's most inspiring entrepreneurs seven days a week. Entrepreneur on Fire generates over $250,000 a month in revenue and offers a free 15-day course on podcasting at freepodcastcourse.com. With over 1 million unique listens a month, Entrepreneur on Fire has inspired Fire Nation to take control of their life and take the entrepreneurial leap. So today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to John. How are you doing today? I'm doing phenomenal. Thanks for the intro, and I am prepared to ignite. Awesome. Let's do it. So let's start with this. What is an entrepreneur on fire, and why is it so important that you live a life with energy like that? So an entrepreneur on fire, to me, is somebody that is really living a life that they chose, that they're a captain of. They're they're steering their own ship, so to speak. And this entrepreneur on fire has to be very open and willing to talk about their past failures. I really focus on the stories for my guests that I have on Entrepreneur on Fire because I want to know, I want my listeners to know that failure is part of the game. Failure is there every step of the way, and that's okay as long as you're learning from those failures. So we always talk about the lessons learned. And then be open to talk about that aha moment that you've had, that great idea, that lightning bolt that came through. And then kind of walk us through the steps you took after having that great idea to turning it into success. And then we're going to talk about something that you're really fired up about right now. Like, you know, that's what we'll get to. And then, of course, we end with the lightning rounds where my guests, these entrepreneurs on fire, are going to ask really specific questions. Uh, they're going to answer really specific questions about different aspects of their life to really, again, kind of unlock the, the mystery that a lot of people have about entrepreneurship. So you yourself, not necessarily uh, experiencing failure, but maybe more disappointment because I know that you had been working a job, you had been working in the corporate world for some time. Uh, what ultimately motivated you? Where was your aha moment when you decided to start this podcast? Well, I definitely experienced failure on a number of levels and in a number of different industries. And it was very disappointing because I knew the failure was coming because I wasn't inspired, because I wasn't passionate about anything that I was doing. And I, at first I thought that was okay. I thought that was just life. Like you didn't get, you weren't inspired by what you did. Like, hello, it's work. But then, you know, fortunately I started listening to people like Dan Kennedy, you know, like Brian Tracy, like Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, you know, these entrepreneurs of, of old and still, you know, current that are just dispensing great information about Life doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. So I started listening to their to their audio books, to their audio courses, reading the right books, and that led me to podcasts. So I started listening to podcasts very avidly, and that led me to my aha moment because I loved listening to the interviews with successful entrepreneurs. To me, that was so inspiring to hear their story. But there's only a couple of shows that were doing it, and they were doing it like once a week or twice a month. And I was like, hello, there's people like myself that are driving to work every day, driving home every day, at the gym three to five times a week, looking to consume this type of content during those different actions. Where's the seven day a week podcast? So I searched for it, it didn't exist. To steal a quote from Gandhi, I decided to be that change that I wanted to be in the world. And here I am, you know, 900 plus episodes later um, with those amazing statistics that you shared and just continuing to rock and roll and have a blast doing it. You've been doing an absolute amazing job. I've actually been kind of following stuff from the start. And uh, it, it's really great because you are someone who I looked up to and always thought, you know, maybe at some point someday I could 
at least reach that point to be able to start building an audience to start uh, learning more and growing myself. So thank you for you know your your honesty, your openness, and telling and sharing your story uh, and how you've gotten here so far. I'm super excited for uh, what the future has to hold for you. Uh, how would you say that um, your past experience? Because I know that you have some experience with in the military and with those other jobs. How would you say that plays a role in you being an entrepreneur today? What have you kind of drawn from those past experiences uh, that have gotten you to uh, say, dedicate yourself for the long haul? Because this is a very hard and a very long journey. It's a very long, it's a very hard journey. I like to equate it to a marathon, not a sprint. You know, that's what we're on right now. We are on a marathon, and that's good because there's a quote that I love that's by Earl Nightingale, which is, success and, ha and happiness is a gradual realization of a worthy ideal. You know, having this goal that's here and then reaching it, like, that's good, but that's not going to be sustained happiness because now, like, okay, what's next? So having this gradual realization of a worthy ideal over this marathon of life, that's what excites me. And going back to my military days, I mean, I definitely attribute a lot of my discipline, a lot of my focus, like a lot of my hard work ethic to that because I saw the results of all of those things. Like when I knew that when I took my platoon over back in 2003, that in six months we were gonna deploy to war, like an actual war environment. As a combat military guy, I was a tanker. So I was in charge of four tanks and 16 men. We had 12 months of work to do in six months. And I had to learn about discipline, about focus, and then about hard work. And guess what? We got it done. So I learned that things can be accomplished when you do those things in the right order with the right mentality. And then I applied that to the world of entrepreneurship. And that's really why I have had such a rocket ship to success because, you know, frankly, there's a lot of amazing entrepreneurs out there, but sometimes people get into entrepreneurship because they think that, you know, they want to be their own boss, but then they're not willing to be their own boss, which is regulate themselves to do the work, mm -hmm. as Stephen Pressfield would say. And and that's what I was able to do from day one because of my military background. So being able to make sure that you hold yourself accountable, that uh, you do your due diligence in getting your own work done, uh, obviously persistence really does pay off uh, when it comes to this. What would you say is the difference between you know, someone running a million dollar business versus your average person who might be listening to this podcast right now? Like, What is preventing them from being able to achieve greatness of that magnitude? Um, scale and leverage. They don't have it, and the people that are running seven-figure businesses uh, do have it. And that's what the amazing thing about podcasting is. And the correct pronunciation is, is Zephon? Zephon, yeah. Zephon. Uh, Zephon, this is why like you're doing what you're doing now and what I'm doing, what I do with Entrepreneur on Fire, because this medium gives us the ability to reach a massive audience on a really scalable scale. And that's exciting. Like My podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire, just last month had a million unique listens, That's which is amazing. insane. <laughs> you know, we've done over 15 million listens since we launched, you know, back in September of 2012 in over 145 countries. I mean, that scale, that leverage is huge. So like if you're listening right now and, and you haven't achieved the type of success that you want, I mean, think about ways to amplify that by adding a podcast into the mix, by adding, you know, other things into the mix that can do that on a really cool and leverageable scale and level. And, and that's what I'm really excited about. And that's why, you know, I've been working really hard in 2015 to create completely free, but awesome courses that do just that. Like we have a completely free course for, for podcasters. Like if you're looking to start a podcast, freepodcastcourse.com is your one-stop shop to learn how to create, grow, and monetize a podcast for free. If you're looking to do webinars, which are an amazing tool for so many reasons, which I get into in depth, you can go to a free 10-day course that I've created at thewebinarcourse.com. I mean, these are completely free courses that I've created for anybody because I see the power of what these mediums can do. And I just want more people to have access to the knowledge to unlock the secrets and use them to their advantage. So we can't really use that excuse anymore of I don't know how to because it's <laughs> out there now.
it's out there for it, sure. Awesome. Well, I will make sure that those links get posted up on our website oh, cool. at www.yourpurpose.com and as well with uh, our YouTube videos and our iTunes podcast. We always have show notes with those links. Um, you posted something on Instagram the other day that I saw. You, you found uh, your 2014 goals that you had written back at the beginning of 2014, uh, and you had set forth a plan for yourself to make $2.5 million for all of 2014. What fears did you have going into that year, and maybe even this year now that we're kind of at the beginning of 2015? Uh, what are some of your biggest obstacles or fears just as a business owner? Um, a lot and they stay prevalent and that's kind of one thing that I really like to focus on when I'm talking to you know different people that are listening to my podcast or I'm on different shows like that is those are never going to go away like don't think you're going to get to a place where you wake up and you're like oh it's an amazing day and I don't have any fear like that's part of the game and it was really interesting to, to look at that piece of paper that I posted on Instagram which is just you know handwritten on my notebook where I was just, you know, like scribbling down right here in the Bay in San Diego, um, my goals for 2015, uh, sorry, 2014, and and it was like I can, I, I was brought back to a place of of scarcity and doubt when I was writing that. I'm like, there's no way I'm ever gonna generate this kind of money. But you know, I might as well shoot for the moon because you know, if I miss, I'll, I'll land amongst the stars. You know that that really cool but corny quote. That's kind of what I was thinking when I when I wrote that stuff down. I was like, there's no way that's going to happen. And I can tell you, it didn't happen how I thought it was going to. Like, I thought we were going to make over a million dollars in a course that I didn't even launch mm -hmm. in 2014. I thought we were going to make $25,000 a month with Podcasters Paradise. Um, we made $300,000 in just <laughs> last month in Podcasters Paradise. Like, it, so some things were, were much bigger than I expected and other things were like much smaller or non-existent. But the key thing is, is I wrote down those goals and I put it out there in the universe and some of them worked out, some of them didn't. Um, but the, the key thing is, is looking back on that is that it was really fascinating to see um, how close I was, you know, where I had 2.5 million as a revenue goal and we got 2.75 million. So we exceeded it. And it was, it was, it was interesting though, to see how close I was to that. And I kind of wonder like, what would have happened if I had written down a million dollars? Right. Because that would have been doubling my revenue from 2013, which would have been a great goal. But for some audacious reason, and I think I even used the word obnoxious in that Instagram post, you know, like I put 2.5 million and, um, you know, it's, it's really kind of made me want to go back and kind of scratch out my goals for 2015 and get obnoxious again. And just like double it. Yeah, let's just double it. Well, it's really limiting. I think that um, to give you a quick story, I, I produced a feature film when I was in college, 118 page script, 96 minutes long when it was done. My senior year in 12 months time, we shot, we edited, we color corrected, we did all the sound design, premiered it in a movie theater, sold out 250 people. We had everyone tell us that we weren't going to do it. I mean, we had to get someone to sign off on it, and we were at our last person to sign off on this when I was in college. And I think that if we hadn't set that lofty goal of we actually said we were going to go to Sundance, we never did go to Sundance, but if we hadn't set that goal, I don't think we ever would have been able to produce a 96-minute long feature film in 12 months' time with a $1,000 budget. It, it just doesn't happen. Uh, so I totally get setting that lofty goal for yourself because I think that it pushes you just to be better and better and better, uh, and it doesn't limit you anymore. Um, have you ever shared that video with your audience? I, I think I'll have to now. <laughs> you got to link it up in the show notes. I, yeah, I want to watch it. <laughs> I'll have to share it with them. Thanks for, for letting me know about that. I don't think mm. anyone's seen it in probably five years, so that'll be cool to bring out awesome. of the closet. Oh, I wish I had one of those to share with Fire Nation. <laughs> so where do you see the future of podcasting going and, and just being online? You know, we've uh, as business owners, we run into things like Facebook engagement and people are always changing the Google algorithms and how iTunes does stuff. Uh, you know, are you worried about the future of just having a business that runs online? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, we live in such a virtual world that is so scalable and so leverageable. Sometimes we just get really caught up in that like focus of what can I do virtually? What can I tweet? What can I post on Instagram? And that's great in a lot of ways because that really allows you to reach a lot of people. I mean, you know, Zephin, you saw... By the way, I had my lovely Kate bring this over. I Skyped it so we could actually hold it up so people could see what we, you were talking about, awesome. about the, the Instagram post right here for people that are watching on video. This is the actual paper um, that, you were, that we were talking about. You were able to see that. 
because of the power of the internet, because, you know, I didn't just, you know, take it and like text it to a couple of my friends, but no, I put it out there in the universe and, you know, it's, it's had a lot of engagement now because of that on Facebook, it's actually like insane. The amount of people that are commenting on it, it's, it's really cool. But at the same time, we're people, you know, that's why I love that right now we're doing video because I don't do this often because for, you know, <clears throat> it video brings with it some struggles like downgraded bandwidth and audio quality and this and that. And a lot of people don't have good setups. Like, you know, I have good lighting, you have good lighting. So we're doing it right. right. I can't count on all my guests to do that. And they'd have like grainy and dark. And so there's a lot of things that go into why I do audio, but I love this video because it's almost like we're here in the same room. We're having a conversation face to face and that's what we as humans crave. So don't be afraid of going the physical route either and, and going that, that, you know, one-on-one -on -one or that, you know, one to many, but in a real environment, like a, like an in-person <clears throat> mastermind or a conference, that's really powerful too. Mm -hmm. And that's actually why one thing that's coming up for me, and this is long-term, I mean, it's not going to happen anytime soon, but I'm in the process of creating a physical book. And that book isn't a, like a, a book like that you see, like there's is a business book, but it's actually called the freedom journal. And it's going to be a journal book where, um, the tagline is a hundred days to your destiny. And, and that's the goal of it is that it's going to take somebody a hundred days to write down goals, to write down affirmations, to write down things that they've accomplished and they're proud of and give them sprints and all this stuff to get them in a hundred days to their goal. But it's going to be a beautifully embossed book. That's going to be you know, awesome to hold, awesome to look at, proud to, to show to other people, you know, with, with the, you know, the little strap. I think I have this thing right here, actually. The strap to close the book, you know, like this right here, yeah, where you can just like kind of close scan. the book. But then it's also going to have, you know, a beautiful little bookmark as well, you know, to kind of like hold your place in the book. You know, something that's like really just an amazing physical item that people can hold and that's real to them. And, mm -hmm. and I love that idea. So I think a combination of the both is the best way to approach the future and never to forget that there will always be a physical side to what we do. I, I'm super excited to see that come out. I definitely oh, want to be one of the first people in line to grab a copy. So I like that. I will be following you. And uh, as soon as that is available, I will be grabbing one. I'm actually going to go to China um, and, you know, take tours of different um, potential manufacturing plants. I'm going to have a video crew with me, so it'll be like a whole thing, but it'll, it'll be fun. That's awesome. Yeah. So we talked about some really cool sides of entrepreneurship. Let me ask you about this. Entrepreneurship is a lot of struggle, right? Like it's not just all flowers and daisies when it comes <laughs> to building these businesses. What are some of the things that you think might surprise people that they don't expect about entrepreneurship? Because a lot of people see just what we post on social media, but oftentimes they don't get to see us being vulnerable or just talking about uh, the sides of entrepreneurship that no one really sees. You hear a lot of people say, I want to be an entrepreneur or when I become an entrepreneur, it's going to be amazing because I'm not going to have to answer to anybody. Like I'm going to be working for myself and calling all the shots and answering to no one. And the reality, my friends, is you will always be answering to somebody because I answer now to the millions of Fire Nation listeners that are out there. That Those are my bosses. Like Fire Nation is my boss. I listen, I know that and I embrace that. I listen to them. I ask them questions. I jump on phone calls with them. I respond to their emails. I sent an email out um, about a week ago that was pretty controversial in some ways where I was talking about, you know, like how much is too much money to make, you know, when I made $93,000 in one day. And, you know, some people were kind of questioning like that. And I was asking that question honestly. And I got 330 email responses back from that one email, which was massive. And, you know, that's just like to see that. But I, I took the time and I responded to each and every one of those emails that came back from that email that I sent out to my newsletter list. And, you know, then the fall, then two days later, I sent kind of like a follow up to that about something very similar in the progression of this. And I got like 250 emails back and I answered every one of those. And people are like, well, John, that's not very scalable. Like that's, I'm like, um, these are my bosses. Like this is who I work for. And this is who allows me to, you know, live on top of the Pacific Ocean here in San Diego and make $400,000 last month like I did. I, I don't forget that. I don't forget that fact that it's, you know, the Zephins of the world that buy the Freedom Journal 
you know, that allow me to do what I do. And so that's one of the biggest misperceptions. So our customers uh, are, are becoming the heart and soul of what we do. Uh, which I think is really amazing because it opens you up to be a much more trusted person, someone who isn't hiding behind a curtain. You really are just as genuine as you know you seem in social media and, and you're the same in real life. Uh, so it's really cool to find out that there's no facade there by any means. Uh, no more Wizard of Oz. Yeah, no, no hidden tricks up our sleeves. <laughs> so let's round this all off. I know you got to run in a sec, but what do you do and what do you think that everyone else should start doing to stay motivated and keep that fire burning? Because a lot of the times it can get put out uh, and we want to keep that up and running. Totally. So a great quote by Jim Rohn is, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And that's such a reality. So look around you and figure out who those five people are right now. And then identify the people that are not adding value to your goal, to your mission. And don't kick them out of your life, but kick them out of your top five for sure. And bring in people who are in your, who, who you do want in that top five, who are going to add value in that top five. That is incredibly valuable for any entrepreneur to really focus on that, to improve their top five. And by doing that also, you know, like a really structured um, goal would be to, to find and join or create and, and host a mastermind. I'm in a very powerful mastermind with just two other people. I think they should be small because you need legitimate floor time. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is once every three weeks, I'm on the hot seat. Every, every week we meet for an hour. This morning, actually, it was I was on the hot seat for an hour with my mastermind talking about the Freedom Journal and the, the production of it and the ideas within it. And it's incredibly valuable. And, and these are people, Greg Hickman of Mobile Marketing Engine, and Rick Mulready of rickmulready.com, he's like a Facebook ad guy who have different skills in different areas, you know, and I'm more of like the mediapreneur. And so we all bring value to it, but that's incredibly important is to find that mastermind and, and really lean on that mastermind for, for information, for influence, and for guidance and support. Thank you for that advice. I actually just joined a mastermind recently myself, so I know that it is How probably, many people are in it? Uh, just two other people. Okay. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a desire to, to make it larger. And I think four people can work. Um, but anything bigger than that, you're really selling yourself short um, just because you're not getting enough of that focus time on you and your business. Um, I'm part of bigger masterminds, too, that meet like once a month. Like I'm, I'm in an in-person mastermind here in San Diego with Pat Flynn and a number of other great entrepreneurs. Um, but, you know, we meet for like six hours once a month in person. And that's powerful, but I get 15 minutes or 20 minutes during that, six hours, you know, as opposed to once every three weeks, it's an hour on me. So mm -hmm. definitely food for thought. There's nothing wrong with being part of more masterminds, but you want that one core like yours is right now with three people. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Real quick again, what was those, the two website links that you mentioned earlier? Uh, cool. So for podcasting, it's free podcastcourse.com webinars the webinarcourse.com but the cool thing is too is that all the magic happens at eofire.com which is where we have links to all of these courses that are completely free and just to make things even more confusing I do have a gift for your listeners Zephin which is my book podcast launch the number one ranked book in Amazon on podcasting but free for your listeners EO fire, uh, sorry, EO fire.com slash gift. So they go to that slash gift, no email opt in required. Absolutely nothing. It's just a gift from me to your listeners. And that's uh, a great book. Awesome. Thanks for being here, John, everyone, John Lee Dumas, entrepreneur on fire, and we will see you next time. You've probably heard me talk about designing a life that you actually want to live. You might have even heard about my travels or experiences and thought to yourself, yeah, I do want to do that. Eventually, someday I'll probably do it. And my guess is that you've been thinking about doing it for a long time. So I want to tell you this. Stop thinking. Your time is right now. You don't need any more time. You don't need any more info. You don't need to keep putting it off and planning for the perfect time because the truth of the matter is this. 
you could be the person who sits around and thinks about living a better life, or you can be the person that decides that today is the day that you're going to actually do it and I want that for you. Because you already have what it takes. You've got a fire inside. Even if you can't see it right now, it's lit, but you need to open yourself up to the possibilities and throw a couple logs into the flames. So join me and the Euro Purpose tribe by subscribing to our YouTube channel and iTunes podcast. And if you really like us, please leave a review. This is Effin Moses Blacksburg, and I can't wait to see you again on the Year of Purpose podcast.